Hello, my name is Voya and welcome to my deep guide and to the nice weather early August edition of Q&A. Living in Norway, you gotta make really, really good use of good weather when we have some. So I decided to bring the camera and do the Q&A here. So let's begin. Hi, is there talk online about security risks on the Onyx Books devices? The standard advice aside, don't, don't do private or high risk work on any uh, unsecured device. Do you think that Onyx Books poses any more of a threat in terms of sharing private user data? Uh, example, phone, email, written content, then other companies like Pocketbook, Remarkable, etc. To be quite honest, no, no, I really don't, uh, mainly because if there was anything, it would have surfaced by now because, um, yeah, there's, there's quite a few users, there's quite a few models available and they have been available for quite a few years. So my impression is that, no, I don't really see any um, inherent added risk uh, for books devices. Actually, I think that they are a little bit less risky because they run native Android and that actually does give you the ability to install your own um, internet security tools, privacy tools, VPN tools, whatever you may want, which is not something that you can do on the other devices. So there's that also to consider. I guess this is gonna be also a test for the microphone uh, to see how much wind it's gonna be, be picked up by the mic because uh, it's starting to get really windy. So we'll see if it's, the footage is usable or not, but I shall persevere. Uh, hello Voya, on off-topic question. What is your opinion about e-ink phones? Do you test any device of this kind? Thank you. <laughs> okay, it's getting really windy now. Um, I haven't had the opportunity to test uh, an e-ink smartphone. I tested an e-ink dumb phone, the Light Phone 2. Um, and that you can actually find the link to somewhere around here. And then you can watch that video. Uh, the opinion about smartphones and e-ink, I think that it's a niche kind of a product that will appeal to very, very narrow type of audience. But I do think that there is an audience for that type of uh, product. And I think that the spectrum of people who would be interested in buying such a product is actually wider than the producers and manufacturers realize. So. That's my opinion as to whether or not I'm gonna be reviewing any of them. I'm not gonna be purchasing them for myself or for the purpose of just reviewing it on the channel, but I'm certainly not opposed to, you know, if, if a company does uh, contact me and says, hey, would you like to review this? I wouldn't be opposed to that um, at all because I think it's an interesting proposition. Next one is in regards to the V Woods uh, announcement of the product and uh, it's more of a comment. It says like, is telling that good e-reader received and already posted quote unquote a review. It also shows where the company's priorities are. Well, two things. Uh, first one is, I don't think that quotation marks are needed. Uh, despite Goody Reader's reputation or opinion of them, what they posted is actually a review. Now, whether or not it is fully unbiased and does it cover all aspects of a device, that's, uh, I don't think that it does. I don't think that it actually touches enough of uh, inherent risks of a Kickstarter. They do mention at the very end of it, but they don't really pose a warning flag of any kind. And also there was zero mention between the coincidence if it is a coincidence between the name of the company, which is V Woods, and the We Wood, um, which out of which We Wood has a bad reputation, and customers have previously been burned several times on several devices. So that I think it's it, it is a review. I don't think that it's fully objective and complete, but it is a review. The second point is that something that I'm finding really really odd with that whole communication with uh, V Woods, and that's the, um, the scheduling conflict that they mentioned. It was about uh, that they reached out to the uh, outlets that were able to provide and create 
content quickly enough for their Kickstarter campaign, right? The thing that I actually find weird is that they specifically said that they had a limited amount of sample models, right, to send out to reviewers. But as of today, when I'm actually recording this, August 11th, I think, yeah, August 11th, um, we only have like two videos. We have three videos, including my own, but mine doesn't really contain uh, uh, the device. There's only like two videos online that contain a sample device. One of them is a good reader, and another one is a small channel um, that has around 300 subscribers, I think exactly 300 subscribers, and the video thus far has had 84 views. So those are the only two channels that have actually posted a review of the AI paper device, um, and, and that, I, that, that just doesn't fit. There, there's something that really just doesn't fit in that whole story. Some, something is off. Something's definitely off there. Another comment, and there's going to be a few about the AI paper. Uh, with the amount of AI stuff they are advertising, this device will probably end up in an even worse state than the re-ink stone if the company behind it disappears. Having things be as local as possible is very important, honestly, even if the company isn't shady. So I think this is a really important point that I originally had in my video, but the video was running long and I didn't want it to turn into an overtly negative kind of commentary about the device, so I cut out that part. <laughs> Okay, um, but I absolutely do agree that this is a very important point, especially for a device that relies so much on a third-party service. Um, you're relying on the support, prolonged support of not only one company, but two companies. And with AI, we don't know how the future regulations are going to impact the services that we have currently and part of the AI paper is that you get like a two-year subscription and things like that. So it's, and, and, and even if that's okay, it means that the stability of the company, in this case V Woods company, has to be really rock solid for you to be able to have and enjoy a two, full two years service of uh, AI services. So, those are really big question marks and uh, really big shoes to fill uh, from a Kickstarter company. So that's something that absolutely has to be um, yeah, taken into consideration if you're considering to pledge and support the AI paper or not. This was another comment uh, in regards to Remarkable this time. And it says the Remarkable does have multi-device support as of a recent update. Three devices per account, but the feature is locked behind the Connect subscription. And thank you very much for this bit of info because I completely missed that. That's something that I really, really, really wish that Remarkable would actually have so that we are able to have multiple devices connected and synchronized via a single account. And up until yeah, recent update, that was not possible, but now it is. So not only is that a very good indication uh, or, or a very good development, but I believe personally that that's an indication that uh, Remarkable as a company are preparing to maybe launch another hardware device, because then that would make even additional sense if they are gonna have more devices for users that they can allow you to you know, use a single account across multiple devices that they may offer. So here's hoping. Here's another one in relation to AI paper, but as a Kickstarter comment in general. Unrelated to this particular product, I think your portrayal of Kickstarter is a little unfair. There is no risk or spending of money and hoping for the best. You're making a pledge, no money spent, based on the project being successful. If it fails, it costs you nothing. I think this is important to make clear because many small independent projects rely upon crowdfunding to survive. Intentional or not, you're coming across saying most crowdfunding projects are scams, not the case in my opinion. First of all, I didn't say that most uh, uh, crowdfunding projects are scams. Second of all, your statement is incomplete. You are omitting the most important part. Yes, it's true. When you make a pledge and all until the project is successful, meaning that it's uh, reached its goal, your money is safe, meaning it's not deducted from your account. So that part is true. But the part that you omitted, and it's the most important part, is that when the project is successful, 
that money is gone. And once the money is gone from your account, you're not getting it back regardless of the outcome of the project. So there are two different things here. You have a Kickstarter project or Kickstarter campaign, and that one, if it is successful, then it gets your money. But that is financing of a project. And I was talking about projects that require or use Kickstarter campaigns for financing. So I was specifically talking about success or failure of a project that's using Kickstarter campaign as a financing option. So I think that it's very, very important not to spread uh, incomplete information because that can lead to misinformation uh, for people who are not experienced with the nature of crowdfunded projects. So yes, there is a tremendous amount of risk associated with any crowdfunding project and people need to be aware of that. There's another comment in regards to Books Go Color 7 and the user says, just a word of warning, my unit did not have a cover included as of 7th of August 2024. It seems that the only reviewers got that, so be aware. I mean, before jumping to conspiracy theories and all of that kind of stuff, have you maybe checked that the package that you bought from the supplier that you bought included the cover or not? Because as far as I'm aware, and last I checked, and I checked just before filming this one, um, the Books Go Color 7 on bookstores does ship with the cover. However, on Amazon and other retailers, it doesn't, nor does it specifically say that the cover is included. So my question is, did you buy from Books Directly or another retailer? And did it say specifically that the cover was included in your purchase or not? Hey, did you notice that Note Air 3 isn't available anymore in the bookstore? No, I have not. And then when I checked, yes, sure enough, it's actually uh, sold out and unavailable in the Hong Kong store and the EU bookstore. However, you can still find it pretty much uh, in a lot of resources on the Amazon, uh, different Amazon sites, and I could find a lot of resources here locally in Norway. The retailers who hold books products, they still have no tier tree. So yeah, it's unavailable in the bookstore, but you can still find it in different uh, stores worldwide. There's another comment in regards to the Kobo Clara. You can rotate images on the Clara, but you have to manually set it, which is not really a big deal okay images but you cannot rotate uh, PDF files and that's something that I've already checked out so what you can manually rotate using the pan uh, command are EPUB files but you cannot do that with PDF files so that limitation absolutely is there and the same user says did I not read somewhere BSR for books also takes a speed and performance hit I don't know if you did read it if you did you you read false or you misunderstood the information. BSR is Books Speed Refresh technology and it is specifically designed to speed things up to improve ghosting and improve refresh speeds. So it's actually the exact opposite of what you're saying. So nope, that's not the case. What does take a hit is the battery performance because of the enhanced performance uh, the display actually gets from the BSR technology. This is in relation to Books Go Color 7. Is the depth setting ghosting issue in third-party apps a problem for color pages only or for regular books as well? Even in Kindle app, for example. And is it something that unique that is unique for this device or was it present in page as well? Uh, first of all, it's present across all of Books devices. So that is a platform-wide limitation. Uh, second of all, it's not as present. It is present in monochromatic content, but way, way less. So it's not something that I would overtly react to. Um, there will be a tiny amount of ghosting, but nowhere near the stuff that you actually see with the color content. With the color content, it's uh, a lot, lot worse. Will you be getting an actual daylight DC1 computer to review? Um, I don't know. I, don't, I didn't get any kind of confirmation that I'm going to get a review loan unit device, but I did pre-order a device 
and uh, yeah that I will get at some point but when that will be I really don't know because unless you followed things the DC one has been delayed by three months so we're gonna have to wait and see what happens with all of this Thank you, Voya. My question is, if I could have you test a certain EPUB file on your various brands of devices, would you and how could I send it to you? Um, unfortunately, that kind of stuff is not something that I would be open to doing. Well, that's it from me uh, for this edition of Q&A. I hope that you found the uh, video and the setting enjoyable and or useful or inspiring or something like that. If you did, please like and subscribe and ding the notification bell in the video below and to get notified when new videos come out on my deep guide and also post additional questions that you may have so that I can use them um, in the next editions of the uh, Q&A on my deep guide. Thank you so much for watching. Stay safe, stay healthy and see you in the next video. Bye.